What's up with all the old X3s I see around me, guys? I mean, everywhere I look, I see the X3. I travel back in time to 2003. I mean, there's XXX everywhere I go. Oh, maybe Gillian Anderson is going to show up. Ah, or maybe not, because we are here for the launch of the new BMW X3. That's the code name G45. I'm going to check out its sleek new styling. I'm going to fondle its interior, and then I'm going to take it for a test drive. Now, first up, a bit of context, guys. This car replaces the single best-selling model for BMW. That's the G01, which was designed by the Hong Kong Australian Calvin Look. Now, this is a super important car for BMW because last year alone, they sold more than 350,000 of them. That's more than the entire Mini brand. And you're talking about the last year of the car's production run. And that's why in the stories, they don't bury the treasure under a great big W. They bury treasure under a great big X, especially if you're BMW, because X means money, it means jewels for you. So I can imagine the bosses at BMW had one simple message for the team behind this car. Don't screw this up. Don't screw this up. Don't screw this up. Don't screw this one up. Don't screw this one up. You're going to see the new X3 in Singapore probably at the end of 2024. And for a start, there's going to be two variants. At the high end, there's this sporty X3 M50 X Drive. Or you can have this entry-level X3 20 X Drive, which I think will cost just over $300,000 with COE. This one has the sweet, sweet B58 engine, which I think is BMW's nicest engine. It is a 3-litre straight-six turbo. And this one has a more ordinary 2-litre turbo with 4 cylinders. With this one, you get nearly 400 horsepower. Very, very nice. I like you. And here you have 208 horsepower, so just over half. And I want to say that all the new X3s come with 48-volt mild hybrid technology. Now you can tell that this is a sporty car because of all the black trim in the front here. Black is the new sporty color. And when you have large black elements like that, it kind of implies a grill, which sort of implies that you have a powerful engine because powerful engines need powerful amounts of air. This is an M performance model. So if you look closely and look at the grill, they have sort of horizontal elements inside here. On a regular X3, what you'll see are vertical elements. And for the first time, they're using sort of diagonal elements as well. So they've used horizontal, vertical, diagonal. <laughs> What's next, BMW? Now, zooming out a little bit, I just want to draw your attention to these new headlights. Now, what's the BMW signature for its headlight design? It's four eyes, and they've kind of kept it over here, but instead of separate elements, these are kind of well, overlapping L's. They're kind of a spooning, which is kind of sweet. And speaking of that, notice how the lights almost kind of kiss the grill now. They used to be separated, so that's kind of nice. They're almost holding hands, and soon they'll be sending each other flowers, I'm sure. Zooming out even more, What's interesting about this car is it has almost a clamshell kind of bonnet. The shut line is down here instead of over here where it is with most cars. Overall, I think this is recognizably an X3 and it does look new. It's not like how the iPhone 16 still looks the same as the iPhone 15. It feels like a bigger jump here. And speaking of jumps, BMW has also showed us the next iX3, which is going to be built on a separate electric car platform. So the X3 and the iX3 are going their separate ways. The electric car is getting Neue Klasse DNA, and the G45 is sticking with BMW's Klar platform. This is a new X3, guys, but I think it is a very, very heavy reworking of the previous car, and that's why the wheelbase is the same as before. There are new dimensions, though, so the proportions are slightly different. The length is up 34 millimeters. The car is 29 mils wider and actually 25 millimeters lower, so that gives it a slightly more sporty stance. And speaking of sporty, this is the M Performance model, so you can see this shadow glass window trim everywhere, very nice. And if you're wondering about the wheels, well, you can actually have them in all black. And these are the 20 inch ones. If you want, you can go up one inch to 21 inches. Oh, I should say that even though this car looks kind of very angular, it's actually very slippery through the air. The aerodynamic measurement is 0.27 CD, which is actually very, very slippery. 
And no doubt it's helped by things like these flush door handles over here. But you know what? This looks like an exercise in subtraction because they seem to have taken out as many lines as they could. Like, even this wheel arch is formed by the door itself. And you know what? When I look at the car, I get the idea that you could almost take a bar of soap and just carve it to get the new X3. And that's why it looks so clean. You know, soap, clean. <laughs> so over at the back, the first thing to catch your eye, or the first thing to catch my eye, is this nifty tailgate spoiler. It tapers down nicely. And then you have these wind deflectors over here. And these could be one of the reasons why this car is just so aerodynamically efficient. When I look at this though, I think it's a slight pity that they couldn't hide this underneath here somewhere, because otherwise, look at how clean the back of this car is. They've basically tidied up the X3 quite a lot. So they've moved the number plate down there and they've left quite a broad surface over here and I think it's nice that they've resisted the overstyling that some brands have resorted to with like light, light bars across and everything. If you go down lower you see more black of course with these diffusers but I definitely have to talk about these. Now the controversial fools at BMW have given this car four exhaust pipes. Controversial? Well everyone knows that four pipes are for full M cars only Oh, but maybe the X3M is going to come up with six tailpipes and then everyone will be happy. Something to talk about is that this car is called the M50, not M50i. Now that's interesting because BMW still uses D for the diesels and E for the plug-ins. So why no I? Well, I think it's so that people don't get confused with the I cars, which are the electric cars now. And also, this car replaces the X3 M40i it has a bit more power, but when I say a bit more power, I mean it's something like 23 more horsepower than before. So I don't know if that's enough of a horsepower jump to justify going from 40i to 50, but the cynical me says this is kind of BMW's way of convincing you to pay a little bit more for this car. And I think that by the time this reaches Singapore, it's going to cost close to $500,000 with COE. So since we're here, let's have a look at the boot together. Now you're going to see a lot of crap in here. Some of it is my crap, some of it is my colleague's crap, but look at how much space there is left in here. It's 570 litres, which is slightly bigger than before. Of course, you can fold the rear seats and then you get 1,700 litres. Two things I want to point out is that there is some underfloor storage and that's useful because you can actually take out this luggage cover and store it there. You do have a grocery hook over here, that's my favourite feature. I even like the fact that it's a very flush surface. A lot of cars have a lip now and you have to carry things out of the boot. So it was good before, but it's better now. So let's check out the back together, guys. But before we climb inside, I want to show you this door card over here with all these lines that just move towards the floor. I think it's a bit of a strange design choice, but what do I know? I'm not a designer, so why don't you follow me inside and we'll check out the space instead. But hey, before we do that, I just want to point out that the car does feel quite premium. I mean, the plastics here are quite nice and soft and it does have an almost entirely vegan interior. So this looks and feels very much like leather, but it isn't. Only the steering wheel is still covered in leather. Now, space-wise, I have nothing to complain about. I'm, of course, sitting behind myself. And look at how much knee room I have over here. I have a lot of headroom as well. But something new I want to point out is that you get this lovely glass roof over here without the spar across. So it's a clear, unbroken panoramic roof. Very, very nice. But the important thing is you can actually close this cover when you're getting too much sun. Uh, something I always complain about with the new BMWs, and I'm going to do it again, is these aircon vents over here. I mean, look at how teeny tiny they are. The panel is this big, but because they have these adjusters here, they just want to make it look nice. They've gone with these teeny tiny aircon vents. I mean, come on guys, we want cold air. We One feature I think is kind of missing, and that's the ability to move these seats forward and backward to expand the boot. We don't seem to have that feature, but never mind. The main thing is, if you're going to transport your kids in the back of the X3, well, they actually have quite a lot of space. And even in the center, have got quite a big transmission tunnel. But otherwise, I don't feel like I'm being pushed up against the ceiling and there is a lot of space back here. So, well, you know, children, they complain about everything. But as a family car, if they were to complain, I would turn them back to them and say, who are you, the Chancellor of Germany? 
Up in front, the X3 looks pretty much totally new. It has the curved display with a 12.3 inch screen for the driver and a 14.9 inch touchscreen for the infotainment. And it looks nestled in the dashboard instead of sitting on top of it. It kind of has a flat bottom steering wheel now, but it's large enough so that you can look through the upper part to see the instruments clearly. The driver's door has a slick looking new haptic control panel and there's still an iDrive controller plus a physical volume controller for the sound system. And thank goodness for that. So this thing runs the latest BMW OS 9, which is actually easier to use than before, I think. So this is the quick select module here where your most used functions live, but the base layer is always navigation and that's pretty handy. Something that, uh, okay, I'm gonna complain about the air vents again, but you know my gripe with these. They're just too small and I think too weak. Let's see how they perform in Singapore. This area is called the Jewel Box. Now, during the press conference, I thought they were overselling it a little bit, Jewel Box, but it actually does look quite nice, especially when it's dark outside because this area is lit, of course. So you kind of have an open tray here. You've got wireless charging for your phone and a couple of cup holders. So not a huge amount of storage, but of course, you've got storage underneath here. I do want to say though that I'm quite happy that BMW resisted the urge to just put a whole bunch of screens across the dashboard. Sometimes cars have an extra screen here for the front passenger and I just think it doesn't make sense. I mean, this is supposed to be a family car and what kind of family are you if you just want to have a screen in front of you so you don't have to talk to your husband? Something quite cool is the interaction bar. And you know, it's been in the 7 Series and 5 Series as well. So you have it here and it actually looks textured or sculpted, but it's actually just design over here. And what it does is it changes colors. Say I do, you know, the hazard lights. And in this car, it actually wraps around the doors as well. And so, you know, it changes the ambience of the car quite a bit. If I go to a different my mode, for example, you can see actually it does change quite a lot. But you know, I've got a problem with the name. It's not even a bar anymore, it goes around like this. So, oh, I see someone I can ask about this. Kim, hey, Kim. Kim, come here for a sec, will you? Um, hmm? Everyone, this is Kimberly Ng from BMW Asia. Kim, I've got a question for you. I like this interaction bar, but the name is just silly. I mean, do you even know what a bar is? Yeah, obviously, it's a place where you go to buy a drink. No, you don't know this because you're young and young people don't know anything you meet people on your phone, but a bar is where you get drinks so you can meet people. So when you call this interaction bar, it sounds like a place to meet women. Okay, do you know what a woman is, first of all? Yeah, a woman is a female adult human. A woman is somebody who covers her drink when you walk into the bar. <laughs> okay, so I'm starting my drive out in the X320, guys. That's going to be the most popular version by far in Singapore. This one has X-Drive and what's under the bonnet is a 2.0-litre 4-cylinder turbo with mild hybrid technology and that brings the horsepower up to 208. So let me just floor it for a second, see what we got. <laughs> okay, well, I guess it's fairly eager and it does pull a bit harder as you rev the engine up. I think the peak torque is 330 Newton meters and 0 to 100 for this car is like 7.8 seconds. So honestly, it's not super quick, but I would say it's respectable. First impressions, guys. The way they've set up the dashboard is actually quite a bit different. It's actually quite high up and quite close to you, almost like a cliff face. But because of that, you actually feel as if you're sitting lower in the car than you're used to. And what I'm looking for here, guys, well, you know, the previous X3 was really a car that had quite a broad envelope between refinement and handling. And I think this one's going to be the same. It's actually quite quiet and it's very plush on the move. I think it actually rides a little bit better than I remember the X3 used to ride. This car has adaptive suspension and I'm actually already in the sport mode, but Okay, this is a smooth road, but it just ties the body down really well and it's just giving me a very comfortable time behind the wheel. But I have to say, I'm kind of hoping for a little bit more excitement here. All right. <laughs> okay, if it's excitement you want, guys, then definitely go for the M50 X Drive. Now, okay, this is an M performance model, so it's not just about a bit more power, a bit of body kit, and then an M logo on the tailgate. They've actually worked over this car pretty comprehensively. So what have they done to it? Well, they've stiffened up the body even more. 
they've really worked over the suspension so it has different suspension settings it's got slightly quicker steering bigger brakes and oh yeah it's got a limited slip differential for the rear axle that gives you more traction out of corners and it even has like different tire sizes they are slightly wider on the rear and i would say that this car just has an extra level of tightness to its controls and what i mean by that is when you make a steering input or something the car responds just that little bit more quickly and that just makes for a much more engaging experience. All right, majestic overtaking power. Let me tell you about, <laughs> that was very abrupt, but let me tell you about this gem of an engine, guys. It is a 3 liter 6 turbo, uh, mild hybrid now, and that helps to bump the power up to 398 horsepower. It's got 580 newton meters, and all of that is enough to send this car from 0 to 100 in just 4.6 seconds. That's seriously quick. But you know what? It's not all about numbers. It's not all about the stopwatch because you have the music of six cylinders as well. And okay, right now I'm in the sport mode. And of course, you're going to hear a little bit more of the engine that way. But I, what I also found out uh, from the BMW guys it, is that if you switch the transmission into the sport mode itself, you do get a little bit more noise and hey, lo and behold, yeah, <laughs> faster gear shifts, more noise. But wait, there's more. Apparently, if you start shifting gears manually, you get even more sound. So let's try that now. <laughs> okay, I hit the limiter there, but wow, okay, there is extra sound. Huh? Having a nice time. Okay, admittedly, the BMWs guys did say that that actually comes from the speaker. So it is, I wouldn't say it's simulated, they're very uh, kind of candid about the fact that it is amplified but what they have said is that they don't do anything or they don't put in any noises that aren't already there so it's not an artificial noise as such it's more like an amplified noise so something relatively new to bmw guys is boost function and that's just a simple downshift paddle over here if you pull it and hold it it gives you access to full power so you get a few seconds of boost so the engine the electric motor the gearbox they all conspire to give you maximum performance and that's why i'm already going at 200. Uh, let's dial it back here <laughs> the exhaust is crackling i'm a total sucker for that and okay you know what i mean i'm having a probably more fun than I should be having behind the wheel right now but at the same time you know I've got five seats and I've got a really big boot so I can carry a lot of stuff with me so I feel like this car really allows you to be a good family man um, when you have to be but it also indulges your hooligan side from time to time And that's the whole point of the X3. I think it's actually BMW's most versatile car. I mean, it's roomy inside, it's comfortable, it's refined, but you can still have fun behind the wheel even though it's an SUV, especially with the M50. For this new X3 though, I wouldn't say it is massively improved from before, more like massively updated. But that's not a bad thing because it still gets two thumbs up from me, just like the old one did. And I think that it should be no surprise if this continues to be the best-selling car for BMW. It's definitely not something the FBI would put into the X-Files. Hey, that's my quick and dirty look at the new BMW X3. If you have any questions about the new X3 or any other BMW in Singapore, feel free to drop me a line. I put my WhatsApp details below. We do have other videos for you to watch, but thanks for watching this one. See you again.